Hey guys, Brian Castro here with Better Chess Training. I'm uh, going to be doing a game in the 15 minute pool on the Internet Chess Club. And one of the things I'm going to try to do is um, talk a little bit more about my opponent's threats and, uh, <clears throat> and what they're trying to do as well as my own plans and thoughts. Uh, sometimes when I am recording, I, I realize I have a lot of thoughts that are going through my head, and I don't always get them across, so I'm going to try that. Uh, also, I'm going to try a little bit of a different opening. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video on this, but I'm studying the Scandinavian a little bit. Um, and I, what I want to do is uh, try to play it in these uh, casual games and see how we do here. I'm studying this uh, Queen to D8 uh, variation. I don't know it a lot, but I used to play the Scandinavian a lot as uh, used to play the Scandinavian a lot a few years ago, and so I know some of the ideas, some of the piece placements. Uh, but it's a nice um, opening to play because you can <clears throat> you can get a, a decent game, a decent position without knowing a ton of theory. However, you do need to have some idea as to um, you know what you want to be doing. So here he is offering a uh, trade and instead of let's see here a couple ways I to do this I, instead of trading right away um, although it is not a bad idea um, I could have tried playing something like Queen to d7 so now that that has been played I can go ahead and play e6 and develop this bishop and the general uh, placement, although again it is does depend on what your opponent does. Uh, general placement will be to put a pawn on uh, c6 as well to um, <clears throat> to protect against things like knight to b5. If I want to play this bishop here to d6, which I typically would want to do, um, that is fine. So here. You might want to play something like knight to e4, and it's not a big deal um, because I can play something like this. <clears throat> now, if he plays knight to e5 here, again, um, it would be a mistake to take it, of course. What I would do is play bishop to d6, most likely. But you see here, it's fairly nice uh, development, fairly easy development for black. Not too many problems, but it also leads to a fairly solid position. Now with this piece here, I'm going to actually just play bishop to e7 to defend. And then I should, again, now be able to castle. Uh, this opening is nice because there's a lot of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a lot of uh, options in terms of what you can do. You can sometimes castle queenside as well depending on what your opponent does. Your opponent also has a lot of options so it's a nice opening. And like I said I'm actually studying a book on that, an ebook right now on a Chessable on that by John Bartholomew and I haven't gotten too much into it so if I play badly uh, let's not blame the book yet but uh, what I think uh, we'll find out is um, I'll learn a few more lines and maybe play a couple of games in this as well to see how how it goes. And uh, and I'll be doing a review maybe in a few weeks on this site of that uh, ebook. Okay. So <clears throat> here, a couple issues here is that, um, well, let's see. There's some tactics here. Knight takes e4, my initial thought. This is hanging, so he has to take here. Um, and then I can take back with the queen, and then he can take here. So um, not really a big deal, but um, or we could just ignore it and castle. So I'm wondering, are there any tactics revolved around that? If that happens, the problem is if I take back with the queen, then he can take twice on f6 and... <clears throat> damage my pawn structure. Uh, it would be a mistake to take here on e5, I think. So let's see here. What is the most efficient way to do this? Server announcement. 
Now, the other thing I can do is that if he does take here on d7, I can just take back here with the knight and then trade that way. But I actually think taking this way is better because it gives me, I guess it kind of initiates a little more what I want to be doing. Um, because I have also have my own threat, so I can play f6 as opposed to letting him initiate the, th the um, <clears throat> letting him initiate the exchanges here. Now I most likely had to take that because he was, of course, threatening my queen. Okay, and now I'm actually thinking I can play. knight to f6 first because I don't want to exchange here it gives him space to take here d takes e5 so he might have a slight space space advantage here now I can attack this pawn a little bit <clears throat> okay um not quite sure what he's got going on here if I castle into this there's no real threats um, so I'm not really too worried about that uh, do I even need to castle I don't necessarily need to castle right now. Uh, the other, the only thing I think of here is if I do castle, he could play something like knight to d7. Well, no, I can't really do that. He just hangs it. So I think I can delay castling for a move and just play rook to d8, attacking this pawn. It is protected here by the queen. And... Uh, let's see here. Will exchanging queens be to my advantage? Right now, I think the position's fairly even. I could even think of doing like a minority attack. So that's a possibility as well. I could also play something like c5 to undermine this pawn. Uh, but I might want to castle before I do that. So let's see. Castle, then c looking at c5. So... <clears throat> Let's do that. My allergies are kicking up, so I apologize if I'm uh, clearing my throat a little bit. And the reason I like this uh, Scandinavian too, it does have some similar structures to the French. So it's not totally unfamiliar with regard to pawn structure. Now the big threat here with uh, c5 is that I'm threatening to take here on um, d4 and perhaps uh, isolating this pawn. Not quite yet, but uh, it could be coming soon. Um, might be more effective if I trade queens. So let's see, do I want to do that? I think that might be a good idea, but the problem is I, I don't know what to do with this knight if he doesn't want to trade queens. It's not a big deal right away. Is c5 effective first? I think it is uh, c5, because if he takes, I just take back with the queen. But I'm, again, I'm not quite threatening to take yet here. So um, let's see here. Do I want to trade queens first, or do I want to double rooks first? Problem with trying to double rooks here is that he can play, he could either harass my rooks with the knight, or if I move it to d5, he can play c4. So I actually think c5 is best right now because getting this structure here where I can attack these pawns is good. Okay. He's protecting his rook here. I like queen to c7, because an idea here would be to play rook to d5, and then I can exchange here as well. So the idea here, playing queen c7, well, let's just make sure there's nothing going on here with this. Uh, if he takes here, I can take with the queen first, or take here and then take with the queen. So that's not really a threat right now. <clears throat> But let's go to, I do like this move, because the idea now is if he takes here, I can take here first. 
The other thing is that I could do something like Queen to B6 hitting this pawn. So there's a lot of ideas here. Or if I take here and he takes back with the Say, say he takes back with the rook, I can trade rooks, and if he wants to take back with the queen, I can get his queen off of the d-file here. So, this position looks okay for me. I don't think it's necessarily winning, but uh, I definitely think it's decent. The other idea here is I can play rook to d5 now to try to double, and then if he moves his knight, uh, then I can play something like queen to h5 with attack, double attack on h2. Of course, you could just move back here to rook to g3, and then if we exchange queens that way, that's okay as well. So this queen on c7 is nice because I can, like I said, I could play something like queen to a5, attacking here, queen to b6, and if he ever moves this queen here so that I can isolate this pawn, and he has to always be wary of this knight here. This knight is well placed, but he has to be careful that it doesn't hang after some exchanges of pawns. The other thing is uh, rook to d5. Now if he plays um, something like c4, I can just trade here because of just trade rooks. I mentioned this pawn structure can come up in the French sometimes, especially in the Rubenstein, which I play where I take on e4. Okay, he's going to move his knight back, protecting here. Um, so he's so I don't want to exchange here because then he can take back with his knight, which again isn't bad. I think what I want to do is actually um, poke away at at these pawns here and see if I can create some weaknesses there. Let me see if there's anything else. I think doubling on the file might be good as well. The other threat here would be something like knight to g5. So do I want to protect against that? My problem with that, of course, is if I... Well, you know what? No, I'm not worried about that necessarily. So I'm going to go ahead and play... Not rook to d5. Rook to d5 is meant by c4. Let's go ahead and poke a little bit. And I'm going to poke at queen to a5 right here. And I'm expecting something like a3. Then I can go back here to b6 and then put another attacker on here potentially. This is one of the things I'm trying to experiment with in my play is uh, sometimes you don't have clear tactical lines where you have a, you know, like a white to play and win type situation. You want to try to induce weaknesses in your opponent by making certain moves. So right here, for example, um, now queen to b6, if he plays b4 to try to, uh, then I can do some exchanges and that will create weaknesses here in these pawns. Now, if he were to take on c5 first, then I would probably take here on b2 first. Um, again, I think this position's fairly even. Okay, so now he is trying to double, and there's a couple things I can do about that. Uh, I can go ahead and take here, which I'm not sure 
is the best move. But actually what I might want to do is double myself on the file and then maybe create some some type of pressure. Um, let's see here. I think he just has too many things on D4 for me to create pressure myself. Let's see here. So B2 is covered. Um, one thought is somehow to get just now oh, getting a knight here doesn't really do anything. I think the best option for me would be to go ahead and attempt to double myself on the file. Now, the other thing I have to be aware about in these types of positions, too, is potential advancement of this pawn. Okay, there's knight to e5, which I thought about before, but forgot about currently. And I have to be careful playing something like rook to d6 because of um, the fork, knight to c4. So, I can play something like... Knight to d5. If he plays c4, then I am just going to take here with the rook and trade rooks. Okay. And doubling here so that we can trade if we want to here as well. What I would like to get in would be something like queen to b3. That would actually be quite, quite deadly. Potentially. Because now he's got some back rank weaknesses to think about as well. I might want to note here, he can't, um, if he plays c4, rook takes d4, because this queen here is lined up here, it's quite nice as well. Then if he plays knight to c4, queen to b3 is good, I think. Let's see here. Well, he could play something like knight to a5, then I could just drop back here. So, could I play something like Well, I can play knight to b3. If he plays knight to a5, then I can just play something like knight to or queen to back to queen to b5. And then he might have to play something like b4, which I think wrecks his uh, pawn structure. So let's try that. Let me just make sure here. Queen to b3, does he have, is he threatening anything else? He can play queen to e3. So that would be another potential shot there. Um, and then I could just back up the rook, I think. So let's try that. Queen to b3. And I'm expecting either queen to e3 or queen to a5. Actually, queen to a, yeah, queen to a5, I should not play queen to b5 because he plays. Okay, there's queen to e3. Then I can just play here, rook to d7. And now he cannot take this pawn because he'd be in a lot of trouble.
Actually, I think I could just go ahead and take this pawn. Because you'd have to take back with the rook. Then I can trade. I think. Another thought here would be to go ahead and play something like uh, queen or b5 and b4. Start to put a little pressure on my opponent. Um, and this would be a form of minority attack, although maybe not what people traditionally think of in that case. Okay, what does this knight or this queen move do? Why did he play this? What can he do now that he couldn't do before? He can go here to the back rank. I think that's what he's trying to do. So the idea here is now he can take here, because if I trade, then my back rank is weak. Uh, so. What can I do about that? Um, I think I could just play this. So now there's no checkmate after he takes here. I can still win this rook. So the idea was if I went ahead and played something else, he would take here, and if I took this rook, he would take it back. And then when I took back with this rook, then I would be in trouble. But now everything is OK because there's no mate threats because I created a little space here. So my next thought is to play b5 and then b b4. Because right now this pawn is pinned. And if it advances it, I can just win a pawn. Okay. The only thing, other thing I would have to be careful of is my queen getting trapped. But right now, um, there's no way for him to do that because this knight would take two moves to attack it. So if I see that he's attacking it, I could scooch out. Like if I played b5 and then say he played knight to c2 to try to trap my queen here with like knight to a1 or something, then I can, as soon as I saw knight to c2, I could play queen to a4, or something like that. Just something to, to get out of the way, or even just play it back here to, uh, to c4. The idea being that he won't be able to trap me. Okay, he plays h3, and I think I can just go ahead and play b5. I'm low on time, so I'm not doing as much calculating, but see, the idea here is to, uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm trying to find, trying to uh, identify my opponent's threats He's actually low on time now as well, which I shouldn't take into account. I should really just take into account my own time, but just knowing that I need to stay ahead so that the pressure's on him to make moves. Okay, knight to... Okay, um, here I can go ahead and... Well, a couple things. I can exchange here. Does that do anything for me? I don't want him to, you know what, I have to exchange because I, he can win a pawn here or he might try something. If I move this knight, say, to d5, he has some sacrificial shenanigans that he might try. So let's just take that off. And then I can play b4. So note here again, he cannot take, cannot take here on c4. So I have kind of a positional advantage. Okay, it takes back with the pawn. So I'm going to go ahead and play b4. So, again, he has a little trouble. If he takes here, then I can win the two, two rooks for the queen, which some might think is good or bad, but uh, I think it's pretty decent in this type of position.
or if he just takes here with c5, I can take here either on a3 or c3 to try to uh, win some material. Oh, no, I can't. I'm sorry. If he does, I have to exchange. Okay, so queen to e3 protecting here. But I can go ahead and win a pawn here, which I will go ahead and do. Okay, so this move may be based on the fact that he's low on time. The only problem here now is that, let's see, do I want to exchange here first? I think I want to just win the pawn first. Now if he takes here, we're just going to trade rooks, and then it will be a queen, queen and pawn endgame which with a couple minutes of an advantage, I should be able to win. But actually this is a good position to show uh, the minority attack and how it creates some weaknesses. It's not your traditional minority attack, but it's the same concept. And also kind of um, working on this file and this pin on this file Okay, so here the idea, I can't move these. Um, I have to take back, or I have to exchange with him here. And actually, I can win a piece right here. Check. And I didn't think about that until just now, but that should, that should be it. White resigns. Yep. And that's it. We'll look at this in a little bit. Okay, I wanted to also look at this position. Um, there is a lot of, you can see there's a lot of contact here between all of the pieces. And I, during the game I took on e4, but I actually did a little analysis here taking on e5. At first I was worried about just the space advantage here, but had I had more time to think about it or thought to think about it, there's a lot of tactics here, okay? For example, if I take here with d3, he takes back, and then I take back here. Now, if he takes back with the pawn, of course he's going to lose a piece. So, he has to take my bishop first. Now, I, if I, I'm not just going to take back here. Instead, I'm going to play um, knight to d2, threatening this rook. Now, of course, if he retreats, uh, then I win the exchange. Uh, but if he attacks my knight, then I can damage his pawn structure with something like this. And then after he takes back, I will take here. And now I've got this nice pawn on this half-open file that I can line up uh, my pieces. So let's say he advances it to d4 to protect e5. Then I would simply, let's see, let's take this one. Um, simply start piling up here on, on this pawn with the, uh, this is a backward pawn. Okay, it's not isolated because of this pawn here, but uh, in effect, it's very weak because it cannot advance without being uh, without being lost. So, in any case, uh, this was an interesting position too, fairly forced as well. So, uh, something that, that I could have uh, maybe improved upon. A little tactical shot there. Okay, let's look at a couple positions from this game. Uh, this first one comes after we've both played our H pawns, giving our king a little loot. Um, here I could have gotten a pawn after exchanges on d4. Uh, the reason I didn't do this earlier was I was looking for ways to uh, gain an advantage here. But uh, let's say he, if he were to play c takes d4, then there's no way that I can uh, win this pawn. But now he has this isolated pawn, so I could work on pressuring that at some point. Okay. Uh, however, just to show you what might happen, if he goes ahead and exchanges uh, on d4, like so, and after queen takes d4, then uh, queen takes b2 wins this pawn. Um, and he could get like a check in here, but there's really no danger uh, to, to my king in this case. So... Uh, the idea is that that 
tension on d4, it's important to be able to calculate the complications there. And in this case, maybe it would have been an edge for me. And it's something I was looking for the whole game, but I kind of like my position keeping that tension there because any exchanges he did on c5 uh, would have been to my advantage. Okay, I wanted to show you some of the detail here with the uh, minority attack. And again, the idea behind the minority attack, I've, I've got a few videos um, about this, is that uh, we have the pawn minority on this side, but we're using it to um, disrupt the structure on the black side, especially when one of these pawns have been advanced so that we can use our pawn to uh, hook on to it. Okay, so the idea here is that no matter what white does, it... Um, wouldn't be pleasant. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if he had taken here on c5, then um, could have done a few things here. And I think um, taking here Check. with uh, the queen would have been effective, as I mentioned Check. during the game. And now I have two rooks against this king. And after he moves here, then uh, I can go ahead and take here. And after he takes back, uh, you could see the weaknesses in these uh, pawns here, and I can just go ahead and attack it with something like this, okay? Uh, let's just go back real quick. Now, if you were to do something like taking here with the C-pawn, then um, I can just go ahead and take back here with the C-pawn, and here we've got this isolated pawn, and so that would give me a positional advantage. I'd be able to pile up on it, and it would cause other troubles. And we can see here, too, that he's got some trouble with... Uh, with these pawns here. I think what he best would be best for him to do would be to play something like uh, this um, to defend here and then I could just scooch out here and then um, I think I have a little bit of an edge here because I'm looking to take here and then uh, disrupt there and again uh, the pressure would be all on the on my side okay and that is that, I think. Let's see here. Uh, let's just make a move for white, uh, just something like this. Um, I just want to give you an example here. For example, if you were to play something like this, and now all the pressure, uh, I would play something like rook to d5 to fix this pawn in place, and then um, at some point play e5 to win this pawn because of this pin here, especially if I were to play something like... Uh, Queen to a5 or something like that. So I think we've talked about isolated pawns uh, previously, but that would be the way to exploit that. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please press the like button. And I typically upload videos twice a week, although sometimes I will add in another video if I want to share something with you. So if you want updates on that, please press the subscribe button. And I hope to see you soon. Have a great day and good luck with your chess.